Welcome back to Paradox Computing and the tutorial for Computercraft for the absolute beginner. Welcome, let's get stuck back into it. So I hope you enjoyed the previous episode and learning about strings and how to print, how to set uh, the location of your cursor on the screen and tell the, the computer how to sleep for a few seconds or sleep for as long as you tell it to. Now we're going to get on with variables. Um, now variables are, <laughs> well variables are like algebra, but don't worry about that. If you're familiar with how algebra works, okay, cool. If you're not, doesn't matter, they're a piece of piss to understand. Let's get into it. So, let's create a new file. If you do have a file called test on there at the moment, um, either type delete, test, or um, if you don't want to have it called test, then you can call it edit, um, edit to create a new file and call it whatever you want. Just remember what you call it, called it. So uh, we'll edit test. And what we're going to do here is um, we're going to create a variable. Now, creating a variable is very simple. We'll call our variable x. And then we're going to say it's equal to by just putting in the equal sign. And then basically a variable can equal anything. It can be a number. It can be a string. Um, it can be a table. Don't worry. Tables are far, far away. We won't be dealing with them anytime soon. Um, but for now, what we'll call our var or what we're going to make our variable equal is going to be hello world again. So we're going back to that old classic hello world. Um, so we've made a string called hello world, and now we're going to put in that good old print command, and we're just going to tell it to print x. Now you can probably guess what's going to happen, but if you can't, don't worry about it. You're new to this. It's yeah. We're just going to see what happens. Test. Hello world. Awesome. Cool. So let's um edit test again. So why did it print hello world instead of just printing X? Well, if we wanted it to only print X, we'd have made it a string. Easy enough to understand. Um, what we're doing here is we're saying print the variable X. X, the computer's going print X. What is X? Oh, the user's already told us what X is. It's hello world. Now, if it didn't know what X is equal, uh, equal to, and you can just put in two minus signs and that will just remove that from the code. So it's turned green, meaning the computer's just going to skip this line of code. We don't, the computer doesn't want to know about this because there's two minus signs in front of it. So if we say just print X, well, no, oh, print, sorry, test. I think I did that last episode. <laughs> Awful. Uh, test, oh, God damn it. Okay, ignore that. We're just going to reboot the computer. The computer will remember a variable if it hasn't been rebooted. So that's something to bear in mind. It might cause you issues down the line or something, but uh, until you reboot a computer, it will actually remember a variable you've assigned it later. And because we ran that test program just before, it still remembered what X was. But if we run it now, print nothing. It's printed absolutely nothing. Why? Because um, if we go back into edit test, it's printing, oh, well, X is a completely empty value. It's a variable, but it hasn't been assigned anything. But now it has. So now the program knows what to print when it prints X. Hope that made sense. Sorry if having to reboot the computer threw you off. So test, hello world. Um, still, that's good to know, hey, that a computer will remember a variable if it hasn't been rebooted, right? Ignore all of that stuff. The important thing to know here is you can assign a value to anything, basically. So we could call this whatever we want. We can call this uh, the x. Oh, and then as long as we say print uh, the x... It'll print it. So you can call your variables whatever you like. 
Um, so let's get an example of when you might actually want to use a variable. Uh, well, we saw that uh, thing before of um, how to clear our screen. So let's remember that term. Dot, and don't worry about typing any of this stuff in just yet. Just follow along. Uh, just, you know, watch along. So term.clear. Um, now let's just say we're going to call... Let's just say we're going to call x is equal to 1. Uh, and let's say y is equal to 3. Um, and now, if you remember the set cursor position uh, function, so term dot set cursor pause. And then in our previous episode, we'd call that one comma one to set the position in the top left hand corner of the screen. Well, uh, we can do now, what we can do now is put in, say we want to put it on the x coordinate of one. So we've got x is equal to one. So here we're going to just going to define it by, oh, I'll move my cursor so you can see what I'm typing, x comma y. And what we're telling it here is go to set the cursor, so the cursor being the flashing little white line that you see, okay, here now, we're going to tell it to move to posi position one comma three because we're going x comma y one comma three and then um we'll give it um uh well let's just set our variable as well for that print command so what do we call it the x random but okay um hello well oh but of course we've got to give it a data type so it has to be you know either an integer a number or a string um, you know, a set of characters. Um, hello world. Oops, force the habit of that. Okay, so now what it's going to do is a position, um, it's going to set the cursor position to 1, and then y, 3, and then it's going to print the x, which we've told it is hello world. Save, exit, run test. Hello world, and you can see here, so on... Um, the X coordinate, so that first coordinate is running across the screen, but it's going to number one on X, and then on Y, it's gone down one, two, three, one comma three. Ta-da! Um, but you should have had a play around with setting cursor positions between episodes, right? You did your homework. Hope so. Cool. So um, now something else about um, doing. Uh, okay. In our print command, so we can say, you know, hello world, but let's just say we wanted it to um, put in, well, we can basically mix up a variable and a string. So see here, it's basically, we're telling it to say whatever the X is, um, which is hello world. Say we wanted it to print something after that. Well, what you can do is you can combine two strings in the print command. So we can say the x um, equals hello world. So we'll just say the x, which means it's printing hello world. And then if you put in two dot dots or two full stops, and then you can put in another string. So we'll say hello world. Uh, how how you doing? Uh, doing doing. Um, so now what we've got to do is mix these two strings together. Now, if I didn't have that space there, it doesn't automatically put in spaces for you. If that space wasn't there, that D would be right next to that H. So what we want is a space. Um, save, exit, run test. Hello world, how you doing? Um, so I hope you get that. So that's just a variable is now going to, the variable is now going to mix up with our string because the variable is a string. This is a string. We're just putting those two right next to each other inside the print command. Easy. So um, why don't you try typing that in? Because we've gone through a lot. Um, something else to explain here is this um, term dot set cursor pause. Now before we had it up there and that was fine, but it's not going to know um, basically. If you can imagine, the script runs chronologically, right? So everything we've done before, it, first it clears the screen, then it sets the cursor position, then it prints. Um, so the script is quite literally going down through it. But if we don't, um, if we had this above this, well, it would go term dot set cursor position x comma y, and if it was sitting just here, 
The script doesn't know what X and Y are yet. It doesn't know what X and Y is until it actually progresses to it. That's why the term dot clear has to be underneath the variables. So that's just a kind of chronological order thing that um, the code runs in. I hope that makes sense. Um, anyway, guys, type all that in. Be sure to, um, you know, you can name this variable something else if you want. I don't know why I ended up calling it that. Um, but yeah, have a, maybe a little bit of play around with changing your variables, changing what they say. Um, beware that, you know, everything um, matches up that, you know, uh, your X is a lowercase X or a lowercase Y, um, you know, that, you know, all you, yeah, all your typing is correct and everything. Have a go at that. And then, um, yeah, pause me and come back. Okay, welcome back. Um, so, let's just have another little go. Um, so, what we're going to do this time is we're going to exit. And now, um, we'll create a new file. We won't delete test. Um, we're going to edit uh, random. So edit random. Now, at this point, um, we're going to create, show a useful situation where you might want to use a variable. So what we're going to say is x is equal to, now this thing I'm going to type in, you don't need to know what it means or anything, but is a handy little thing to do, to know. Um, it's math.random. Math.random. Um, it's basically like a library of functions, the math library, um, which is, don't worry, you don't have to know about that. There's lots of useful little things in the math library, and we'll get into more of those things as we go along. But for now, type in math.random. You can probably imagine what it's going to do. It's going to generate a random number for us. So um, we'll also put in 1, 10, because it's going to be looking for... Um, a value, it, I don't think you have to put one in, but um, I think by default it goes between zero and one in like decimal places, so it will generate some random, you know, 0.05987, blah, blah, blah. Here, if we put in one and 10, it'll just generate a random whole number between one and 10. So, and now we can say, we're going to do that same thing we did before. We're going to say print, and we're going to put in a string, which is going to say, um, your number is, put in a colon, then we're going to put in a space because you need to put in a space, the um, computer doesn't know how to do that automatically for you, and then we're going to put x, bam. So then uh, what it's going to do is it's going to mix up the string, and while I do always say you have to have a string inside your print command, it does always have to be a string. Lua is smart enough, but when you give it a number or an integer, um, I don't know about decimal places necessarily. Oh, no, actually, yeah, it does work. With Basically, Lua is smart enough that when you give it the print command and a number, it does automatically convert the number from a number into a string. So that is handy. But please always try and put strings in your print command. It's going to save you a lot of effort down the line. Anyway, what this is going to do is it's going to print... Uh, up on the screen, it's going to go, your your number is, and then it's going to look for what X is. It knows what X is. Well, actually, it's going to generate a random number to be X and plonk it down there. So let's see how that goes. Save, exit, random, your number is 9, your number is 3, your number is 7, your number is 1, your number is 8, your number is 7 again, lucky 7! Cool, guys. So that is our little random um, number generator. So why don't you have a play around with that? Cool. Now, what we could also do is um, we'll put our math there. We can actually get it to maybe, say, put a um, put this somewhere randomly on the screen between 1 and 10. So let's just go set a cursor, a cursor. Uh, mad spelling. Um, okay, ignore that. Term, always term dot set cursor pause. And now we're going to give it its coordinate. So um, we want it to go somewhere randomly on, well, let's just keep it, let's try and keep it over to the left. So we'll keep that there. But then X here. Ooh, my computer's made a strange noise at me. 
bloody Windows 8. Um, anyway, term dot set cursor pause one comma x, and then it's going to randomly put us somewhere along this side of the screen. Well, within the first ten rows along this side. And I think there's like maybe actually fifteen, but anyway, um, yeah. And then it's going to print there um, a random number. So let's have a look at that. Save, exit, random, bam. Hey, it went down to line four and printed four random. Went down to the line. Is that actually, do you reckon that's line seven? I think that is actually line seven. Yeah. Six. Um, uh, don't even know where that one went. I think it did four again. Three. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, go on, get, hey, look at that. <laughs> Probably worth, hey, we got the whole thing. Um, it's probably worth, uh, oh, that's so confusing without the, the clear. Uh, edit random. Uh, <laughs> before you type this in yourself, uh, we should probably put in a uh, term dot clear. So it doesn't just, you know, populate the screen like that. There we go. Oh, whoop, oh, random. There you go, so now it's jumping all over the screen. So that's the kind of thing that you can do with, um, yeah, with variables. You can make them equal whatever you want. They're incredibly powerful. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything for this episode. We are now masters of variables. Hurrah! Um, cool. Now, if anything in that did not make sense, that's fine. Um, just have a play around with the things in this video, with the things you've learnt. Um, maybe, I don't know, try different variables, um, print up different stuff, try combining different strings with different variables, you can make them be whatever you want, um, and yeah, have a play around, um, and enjoy <laughs> come back for the next episode please like and subscribe if that is your thing if it's not that is absolutely fine this is a free service offered by that paradox computing um and yeah i'll see you next episode guys thanks for watching